Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and it's time for my Squash That Series Readathon vlog. There goes the cops. This is a readathon that I have been planning to redo for a while. Very excited. It's being hosted by Kayla from Kayla Ray Reads and Bailey from Is Bailey Reading. Two wonderful channels that if you're not following, you should go and check them out right now because they're wonderful women and I love this readathon that they've started. It's basically a readathon where you squash that series. You're trying to read more books in the series that you have ongoing. And I've got over 50 five series I'm currently working on at the moment so I, I think this is a good one for me and I feel like it's pretty doable because realistically you can just read whatever you want as far as you're continuing a series and you don't have to follow any prompts at least I don't think so is that, is that right guys like can I just read whatever I want but to make it more challenging they have different ways that you can fulfill prompts and this time around we're playing Ruby from Ruby Red's Tic Tac TBR. So I'm really excited about that because I love Ruby's game and if you haven't checked out Ruby's channel and Ruby's TBR game go do that now. But also we get to create our own Tic Tac TBR board with all the prompts that Bailey and Kayla have put in this spreadsheet for us to populate. So I'm going to show you how that went. I randomly generated numbers to create my Tic Tac TBR and then you'll see when I put the numbers in what prompts I end up getting. And hopefully I can get as many Tic Tac Toes as I possibly can. I don't think I'll be able to do a blackout just the way my weekend is going and knowing that I may have to work Saturday and Sunday. I, I, I'm not sure it's gonna happen. I'm just, my reading has not been going very well, but I'm gonna do what I can, I'm gonna try. So please come along with me on my journey and let's look at my Tic Tac TBR board right now. So we've got our template and there's some instructions on how to use it. And then there are the 27 prompts that are possible that can come up. So I used a random number generator. I put one through 27. And then the number that I came up with was 11. So when I put 11 in the first square, the prompt that came up with is series you were caught up on. Like it's a series you were caught up on, but a new book has come out since. Then for my second random generation, I got the number four. So for the number four, the prompt is a novella, which is great. Ideally, I will read Martha Wells' All Systems Red, but I'm also thinking I could read one of the Wayward Children's books. So I would like to get to this one and we'll see, we'll see. Oh, and as far as the series that you were caught up on, that also kind of works for series that you have completed, but you want to reread. So I, I'm planning on rereading the Infernal Devices series, so I'm going to try and read Clockwork Angel for that. So that's the very first book in that series, and we'll see if that happens. But that's what my idea is that I can use for that particular prompt. For the third number, I got six, and for that one, the prompt is Has Water on the Cover. So for a book that has water on the cover, I'm going with the fourth book in the Magic Treehouse series, Pirates Past Noon. I am trying to read all four of these this month. They're at the beach. This one has water on the cover. And this is the only one that's like on my TBR that has water on the cover. So I'm glad this one works because my choices were limited. For the fourth space, I randomly generated 20. And the prompt for that is average rating is less than 3.75 stars. So for a book that has an average rating of less than 3.75 stars, I went with The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce because this is actually part of a series. And the second book I think just came out. This is one of the books that I've been wanting to read for a while, finally getting a chance to read it. I know that a lot of people didn't love it, but I think that I might enjoy it. Definitely a low rated book, so we'll see how it goes. For space number five, I randomly generated number eight. And for that, the prompt was a three star prediction. So for three star prediction, I'm honestly also using the sanatorium by Sarah Pierce because I also recognize that even though I think I may enjoy this one, it does have pretty low ratings and not a lot of people did enjoy it. So there's a good chance that I may still enjoy it. Like to me within a three star range is still enjoyable. Like I had a good time reading it, but it may not be the best book that I've ever read. So I think that it's a safe prediction to say that this will be within the three star range. Now, maybe it's closer to four star, like a 3.75, who knows? But that to me is still a three star prediction. For my sixth spot, I came up with number 19. And the prompt for that is a series that has five plus books. Now I have a lot of options for this. The option that I was gonna use is the third book in the Magic Treehouse series, Mummies in the Morning. But there are other books. So if I end up reading a different book, oh, I'm planning on reading this one. So most likely I'll count this for that spot. But you never know. And there are quite a few books on my TBR that have 
five or more books in the series. So we'll just, we'll see what happens. For some of the seventh prompt, I generated the number 14. And the prompt for that is finish a series. So the only series that I'm really anxious to finish right now is Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. Now, this is a big book, and these books are not the quickest of reads. They're enjoyable. I love this series. It's one of my favorite series at this point. I haven't read the third one yet, but the first two books I absolutely adore. But the chances of me actually getting to this this weekend, very minimal. But uh, this is what I would like to read for this prompt. Whether or not that happens, you know, but you know, who knows? <laughs> Maybe I'll just scrap everything and read this one. But I, I really do need to read this one anyways, and I would like to read it as well. So for the eighth prompt, I randomly generated the number 21. And the prompt for that one is restart book one. Now, I was planning on using Clockwork Angel for this because I would be restarting that series, but I'm currently reading Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And this is a series that I never completed. I loved this book absolutely love this book. Consider it one of my favorite books of all time. And I was like, well, is it really? I've got to reread it and see. And I'm working on that right now. I'm going to have it finished definitely before the end of the weekend. And I, I feel like, is it okay that I in included a book that I'm currently working on? I don't remember <laughs> if in the announcement videos, if they said I could use a book that I've already started, but I'm going to anyways. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kayla and Bailey. I am a cheater. <laughs> Cheaters never prosper, but uh, it feels good to me to get this book finished this weekend, so <laughs> I'm using it. It's the first book in this series, and it's a book I've restarted, so yeah, I'm, I'm using it. So for my ninth and final prompt, I got number 27. And so for 27, the prompt is a highly anticipated read. And there's so many books that will work for this that honestly it's really hard to to say because i could include the sanitarium for this because i have been anticipating this book ever since it came out i'm a little discouraged that it's not very well rated but oh well in an absent dream which is the fourth book in the sean mcguire series i i would like to read that i'm anticipating that one of course all systems reds one i've been wanting to read for a long time uh, well Met is on my TBR and I would love to read this one because I would love a romance right now. I think that would be a lot of fun. And this is the start of a series. Oh, and then I'm not going to start this this week. I'm planning on starting it next week, so I'm not going to count that. Realistically, those are all the ones that I could handle doing, but I've got so many series on my TBR right now and I'm anticipating pretty much all of them. So we'll see what ends up happening. I've got a lot of choices, a lot of options, and... Just fingers crossed that I can get some reading done for this vlog so that <laughs> I have something to share with you. If I read a book and it works for two prompts, I will use it for two prompts because this is only a four day readathon. They're trying to make it as easy on us as possible. And I'm hoping I can make some good progress on my series this weekend. So fingers crossed that happens. And let's go on to the actual vlog. <music> It's day one of Squash That Series, and I'm, I'm excited, but I'm running late. I'm running late for work, so we're heading out to the field. I gotta go pick up the truck and head out there. So I've got a nice hour and a half long drive to get out to the field, so I get to listen to audiobooks, especially because today I'm not driving with anybody else. And yesterday I finished my audiobook that I was working on, so that's exciting because then I can start a whole new one. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to continue a series and try and you know, fulfill some of my prompts. I don't know what they fulfill at the moment, but I was like, oh, I should start listening to that one. So I'm going to listen to In an Absent Dream by Sean McGuire. This is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series, and I've been really enjoying the series so far. So I'm excited to see what happens next. 
And I've listened to a lot of these on audiobooks. So, I mean, I know that I would probably enjoy them just as much physical, but I've really been enjoying them on audiobooks. So I don't feel too bad continuing on that way. So, I'm so tired. We've worked a lot. I've worked a lot this week. <laughs> I'm so tired. So, it's Thursday. I'm hoping to get off early today because I got a lot of homework I haven't done yet. And I've just been out in the field so much that I am phys I'm wary. Like, I'm super wary. Also, I'm currently reading on ebook Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And it's going to fulfill the restart book one. It's going to fulfill that prompt for sure. I don't know what else it'll fulfill, but once I finish it, then we'll worry about that. Usually, like, I have time because I'm working on turbidity and stuff, but we've been doing so much defishing that there's been no time to sit and read this first week, at least, during field work. So, if I have time, I will read Shadow of the Wind out there. If I don't, then I will hopefully read more of it tonight after working on my homework. All right. See you in a little bit. A conviction that as long as she followed the rules, she could find her way through any maze. So I'm back from the field and it was a rough day. It was a long day with a lot of defishing. Ten and a half hours a work day. I wasn't out there ten and a half hours because it's a three hour round trip drive. But we were in the sun for a long time and I applied and reapplied my sunscreen quite a few times and I still think I got burned today. So and I've got a million bug bites and I'm like, okay, field life, here I am. I'm back. <laughs> but I'm so tired. So I listened to In an Absent Dream. So of the four books from this series so far, I'd say that this is probably my least favorite at the moment. I'm only a third of the way through and a lot can happen, of course, in the next two thirds. And, and I'm still very interested in it. You know, Shauna McGuire does such a great job with these incredible, fun, quirky, odd ideas, but I really like their odd ideas. I like the way they set a scene because I feel like you can visualize most of these places. Maybe not so much in this one. Maybe that's why I'm not enjoying it as much. It's a little less detailed in the way the world is described. Maybe that will change a little bit as we go forward. It's kind of interesting the way it's formatted too because it's in different parts. The first part of this book is really getting to know this character, Catherine Lundy. And a lot about her personality, which is helpful because then you understand more why she has been sent to this portal world and why the door became available to her. And then you learn about all these different rules that are specific to this world. So it's like learning a lot more about the place, but then not as much about her experience because all of a sudden part one ends and she's coming back home and you missed a good portion of her adventure in this portal world. And so I'll be interested to see if they do like flashbacks or if that's not important, like knowing the whole story of what her experience was in this portal world. Like, was that not the point? Like, was that not the point, knowing her whole experience there? I haven't quite connected with this character yet, this main character, and I'm not as interested in this portal world as I was with some of the other ones we've read so far. But that's why at this moment, it may not be my favorite of the Wayward Children series, but I'm still really enjoying it. Like, it's still a great series. It's so much fun, and I can't wait to see what happens next. So I've eaten dinner because I was starving when I got home, and I'm gonna be taking a shower now because I'm still nasty from the field. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna start working on Shadow of the because that is the book that I need to work on and finish because I'm at least, I think I'm three quarters of the way through that one. I'm just so excited to continue on and I am giving myself the freedom tonight to just read because I'm exhausted and I know I need to do my homework, but <laughs> I'm just going to do it tomorrow because I'm not going to work tomorrow. And I may finish off the second Magic Treehouse book, which isn't actually one of the ones I planned on reading for this readathon because I was planning on reading the third and the fourth, but I need to get the second one done before I can do that. But these are such short books, like they're so quick to get through that I should be able to get through those pretty quickly.
Didn't get as much reading done as I wanted to tonight. I had good intentions, but I was just so like brain tired, body tired, everything is tired, tired. So I did read a little bit more of, cause I had started this last night, but I hadn't read too much last night. And that's The Night at Dawn. And I'm reading this because I'm participating in the read along hosted by Martine from Just Martine and Kayla from Kayla Ray Reads. So I will link their announcement video down below. And I have never read this series, so I thought it'd be fun to try it because I'm gonna be a teacher. And this is a very popular series. It was after my time. I'm pretty sure it was after my time. It looks like it was originally written in 1993, which I mean, I was 10 then. So this would maybe have been a little young for me. Maybe that's why I never read the series like at that time. But I figure I'm gonna be teaching elementary. Might as well see what all the fuss is about with these magic treehouse books. And I really enjoyed the first one. I had a lot of fun with it. So now on the second one, I don't know if I'm enjoying the second one as much as I enjoyed the first one. These are super cute and fun reads and they're super easy. And yet I was like reading this, I'm on page 42 and I'm like, just my eyes keep closing. And like, even with this simple children's book, I cannot keep my eyes open. I also read not very much, maybe a chapter's worth of Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Efo. I'm just too tired. Like every time I wanted to start reading, I thought of something else I should get done tonight. Or I just sat there on my chair and watched TV or just, I couldn't, couldn't focus. So I'm gonna call day one done. I did, got a little progress in this one. I got through 30% of it in an absent dream and I read a teeny bit of Shadow of the Wind. So hopefully tomorrow, when I'm not gonna be working, but I also have a lot of other things I have to do, including homework. And we're also gonna go see a movie tomorrow night too, so it's gonna be a busy day tomorrow, but hopefully I'll get some reading done. I'm just gonna try and make time for it so that I can get some of these reads done. I'd like to get all of the Magic Treehouse books that I need to read done tomorrow. Let's we'll see what happens. Tomorrow's a new day. Good night. Good morning. It is day two of Squash That Series. So this is the day where I'm not working and hopefully I can get some reading done, but I also have to do homework and I have to do this and I have to do that and there's many things. But I did finish one book, <laughs> this little teeny book. <laughs> and that is the second book in the Magic Treehouse series, The Night of Dawn. So this is gonna count for a book with, let's see, a series that has five plus books in it. I'm gonna count it for that one. And, um, you know, it was a three star read for me. I, I liked the first book better. The first book was the one about dinosaurs and I enjoyed that a lot more. The story itself wasn't as exciting for me. Basically these two kids uh, have found this magic tree house and they're using the books inside of it to transport them to other places. So this one, they went to a place with knights and castles and stuff. I felt like the story was a little incomplete to me. There wasn't much of a journey in my opinion. Now I know that that may not be true for everybody else, but I guess I was a lot more impressed by the first book. And so this one I was like, mm, okay. So I'm excited to continue reading this series though, because I like the concept. I think it's fun. And I do like how it's encouraging research for one, especially Jack, he uses the books to research information about the places he goes to. And of course it drives Annie, his little sister nuts. He is researching information while he's in these different places. So he knows how to face certain things or knows, you know, is able to find his way around. And then two, it encourages journaling and taking notes and stuff like that, which I think is very important for children to learn. Also, it's sort of data collecting in a sense, like it's, it's qualitative data collecting, but it's still data collection. So I think these are like really good skills that, that children can learn, but it is also really fun because it's like a mystery and adventure. I could see kids really enjoying this. And yeah, it's it's cute and it's fun. I'm glad I'm doing this read along because I'm having fun with this and it's nice, easy book to get through. Our local like independent movie theater is having this thing, I think it's Swayze Summer or something along those lines. And they're playing a whole bunch of Patrick Swayze movies like outside. Today they're doing Dirty Dancing, which is of course one of my favorite Patrick Swayze movies. My mom and I are gonna go with my neighbor, Kelsey, and she's never seen Dirty Dancing. She said she's actually never seen any Patrick Swayze movies before. So I'm excited for her to either love or hate <laughs> Dirty Dancing. Either way, it'll be fun because you know, it's a, 
it's a fun movie. And so yeah, I'm not sure how much time I'll have for reading, but I'm gonna try and eke it in wherever I can. So before my coffee gets cold, I better go drink it and read a little bit of Shadow of the Wind. I will check up with you later. <laughs> that series and I am running late to get to work. <laughs> Not too bad but a little bit. It is a late start this morning which is a good thing but I got home really late last night because we went to see Dirty Dancing and it was so much fun. It was so so much fun. I guess I should have realized this but I didn't realize that I know every single song on that soundtrack. I guess I didn't realize that I've watched Dirty Dancing that many times because I you know yeah. Anyways, um, it was a lot of fun. It was great to go with my friend. My boss actually was there and she's gonna be out in the field today too. So that was kind of fun to see her and we were kind of texting back and forth. So it was pretty cool. I'm 94% of the way through Shadow of the Wind and still going great. I didn't get a chance to listen to In an Absent Dream yesterday. <sighs> uh, yeah, it just, it was a busy day. It ended up being, not busy, but like trying to get things done. I had schoolwork. So I, I was also exhausted because that was like my only day off. I'm afraid I might have to work tomorrow too. It was just nice to kind of relax a little bit. And yeah, we just had a wonderful time last night, which was good because I needed it. I was not feeling like going out, but once we went out, once we got out, it felt great. So I'm currently making lunch and breakfast. I'm making two this time because one was not enough last time out in the field. And I don't know how long the workday is gonna be today, but I'm hoping it won't be too long. I don't think I'll be able to listen to my audiobook on the way out because I'm driving with my coworker, Chris. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So we'll see what happens to see if I get any reading done. When I come home tonight, I'll try and read a little bit. I wanna get Shadow of the Wind finished, but I also need to finish my Sunday sum up. So that's my plans for today. Work, Sunday sum up, finish Shadow of the Wind. And I'm definitely not gonna have a ton of books that I've read for you in this vlog, but at least, you know, I'm working through my series and getting some things finished. Hello, I'm back from the field and I came home to a really fun surprise. My cousins are visiting. So I came home and they were at the house and I was like, oh my goodness. So we got to visit for a while and that was really wonderful. And now I'm starting work on my Sunday sum up. So that's what I plan on doing first. But right now I'm taking Cece out for a walk while I listen to In an Absent Tree and that's going really well. Still haven't made it very far because I wasn't able to listen to it while I was going to and from work today. Just doing what I can. And after I get a good majority of my video edited, I will start listening to Shadow of the Wind because I really want to finish that book tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But tomorrow's an early morning. So we'll see because I have to be at work at 530 to pick up the truck. So we'll see how you know, because I do need to sleep tonight. Good morning, it's day four of Squash That Series and I did read more last night. I did end up getting to 99% of Shadow of the Wind. I had like 20 pages left <laughs> and I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was so tired. I think I fell asleep around 10 and that was after like almost falling asleep at 9.30 and then like powering through and reading some more until 10. So yeah, I am so close to finishing Shadow of the Wind. And this morning when I got up, we have uh, Bloody Marys we do with our family on Sundays. So I, oh, and I don't have to work. So that's great. We switched the schedule around a bit so that I have today off. And um, yeah, I'm a little muddle-headed <laughs> so far this morning. But 
I was having so many issues with my Sunday sum up, so I ended up deleting some of the footage and re-uploading it and stuff like that because it was like, it was really weird. I'm having some really weird issues with my footage lately. And like w the videos were coming through on my editor with different audio to them. So you'd have the video, the correct video, but different audio. And then there was one that wasn't working at all. I had multiples of some, of, and so just the way they uploaded for some reason was completely like a problem. So I did finally get everything fixed. We're running late for our drinks this morning, but you know, that's okay. I think our family's pretty used to it. <laughs> so I really wanna finish that last 20 pages of Shadow of the Wind. Uh, because I, that might be the only book I end up finishing during this this Squash That series readathon. Although I would like to get those two Magic Treehouse books finished because they shouldn't take that long, right? I listened to maybe 10, 20 more minutes of In an Absent Dream yesterday. Honestly, my reading for this vlog have not gone well. But I have some fun things I'll be up to today. So hopefully I'll get some more uh, B-roll fun footage. My cousins are visiting. I'm really excited about that. And we are going to go to some bookstores because they really want to pick up some books. So maybe I'll have a haul that I can share with you. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I will at least give you a review of Shadow of the Wind because that will be finished. I will finish that today. <laughs> oh, what a crazy, crazy weekend. Who are you? Uh, Joy. Char. <laughs> What do you want? Books! Now! <laughs> <laughs> Star, what'd you get? Hidden Figures. Have because you seen the movie? I have. And? That's why I wanted to read this book because I've seen the movie. It was so good. <laughs> Is that it? That's it. <laughs> That's all you got? Yeah. How long were we there? <laughs> An hour oh. or two. It felt, like, it felt a lot like two hours. <laughs> like forever. I okay. Oh my gosh, Jordan got more. Just a little more. Just a couple. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's been looking for this book for a very long time. Yeah, so I got Garth Keys to the Kingdom. This is Mr. Monday. It's the first book. I have two other ones I've got off thrift books. Yeah. Or um, the free, you know how they throw stuff in the free boxes outside? Yeah. So I've gotten one from either of those. Now I'm still trying to find the rest. And slowly but surely. in there? I have no idea. But I'll find them. Then I, ha I got Dean Koontz Intensity. Uh -huh. I really like Dean Koontz Life Expectancy. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And so wow. I've read a couple of his other things, but I'm looking for another one that I can really hold on to. Okay. And then I got these four, which is a series. Uh -huh. And it got really good reviews on Goodreads, so I'm hoping that I really like them. I'm gonna start with the first one, hope I like it if not. And the first one, is it just four? The first one is this one, I believe. Okay. So mom went a little overboard. I've been collecting Patricia Cornwall's uh, Scarpetta series, and I have a bunch of them, but I didn't have book one, which is Post Mortem. Post -mortem. And I didn't have book two, which is Body of Evidence. So I picked these up, and they're like four bucks each, so well worth it. And then at the at the front of the store, they had these cheap books, um, three dollars each or five for ten dollars. So I looked this up. This got a four. This sounds kind of good. It's about a dog. About a dog. And then 
a friend of ours turned me on to Jeffrey Deavers. These were three dollars. Well, like I said, three dollars each or ten for five for ten. Five for ten. So I got two Deaver ones. Yay! And this one kind of sounded good. It's it's I think it's New York in 1918 or something like that. And so it's a murder mystery by Mariah Fredericks. Never heard of it, but I mean it looked interesting. It looked interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see me? <laughs> I see from nipple up. All right. Yeah. You can... okay. Stay there. So, what did I get? It was kind of loud in the restaurant, so we decided to try it out here. So, I got Rule of Wolves, which is by Lee Bardugo. This is the second? King of Scars is the first one. And it was like eight fifty. so it's hard. So, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm getting that. And then, what else did I get? So weird when I'm not filming myself. <laughs> like really awkward. Okay, and then I got this. So this actually just came out recently, the, ha the Hacienda by Isabel Cañas, and it was three bucks. Actually, it was, it was the deal was five for ten, so it was even less than three bucks. And I don't know if it got, I think it got okay ratings. So I'm excited to try this one out. This is a, I think it's a thriller mystery. And then. <laughs> and then I loved 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and I have never had Love in the Time of Cholera so I need to read this one so I picked this one up and I'm excited about this one because you know I love him and then booktube favorite Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman I've been wanting to read this one a lot so I'm really excited about that one And I got Camp by L.S. Rosen. Oh. Rosen. This is about this young boy who goes to camp and he's really into this other kid. And the other kid only likes masculine boys and he's not. So he's maybe going to change the way he is for this other guy. But should he do that? I don't know. So we'll find out. And then I have been slowly collecting the Expanse series. So I've got Caliban's War, which I think this one is the second book. And Abaddon's Gate, which is the third book. So I have the first, second, third and fourth books now. So I'm excited about this series. I really want to read it. And yeah, these were nine bucks. Six, seven, seven books for like $52. Pretty darn good. And then two of them are hardbacks. So like it was pretty good. These are pretty popular books. So I'm excited about them. Okay, so we just got back from a wonderful afternoon. Just spending time with my cousins. We went to a bookshop. It was so much fun. We got a lot of books. And then we went to dinner. And I'm taking Cece out. And I was going to tell you all about Shot of the Wind because I finally finished that one. But I've already been bit by multiple mosquitoes while I'm out here. So heading back into the house. It's been great though. I absolutely love this book. I reread it. Uh, kind of nervous because I was hoping that I would continue to love it as much as I did the first time. And I did. I loved it as much as I did the first time. Five stars. Absolutely loved Shot of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Cephalon. Recommend it if you like. I mean, it's a gothic. It's a, it's a modern gothic novel. Very character driven, very atmospheric. It's not necessarily a mystery that will surprise you and shock you, but I think just the beauty of the writing, the beauty of these characters, you get really attached to them. And the way that Carlos Ruiz Cephalon can, can put a story together, it's just, it's stunning. It's beautiful writing. It's very accomplished writing. You can tell that this author really knows what he's doing and I absolutely love it. Started reading Magic Treehouse, Mummies in the Morning and didn't make it very far. I was starting to get sleepy, so I don't know how long I'll be able to stay up and actually read or if I just need to take a nap, but I have a really early start tomorrow morning for work. So I need to wake up at least by 4, 4.15. And then we'll be out doing fish exclusion early on tomorrow. So I wanted to tell you before I fell asleep <laughs> a little bit more about Shadow of the Wind because I was having such a hard time outside. The mosquitoes were just attacking me. And I already have so many bug bites from not only mosquitoes, but deer flies and everything that's on the river that's been attacking me the last few days that I'm just covered head to toe in bites and I'm tired of it. I don't want any more. <laughs> so I ran inside as quick as I could. So the story is about this young boy named Daniel and his father is a bookseller 
and on his like, I don't remember what birthday it is, maybe it's his 15th birthday, his dad takes him to the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, which is this place where all the books that are no longer being published are just really not popular books anymore, are kind of those books that have been forgotten. There's at least one copy of each of them that is stored in this this big, huge cemetery of of books. It, it's, it sounds like an amazing library is what it sounds like. I would love to go to the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. So Daniel goes there and his dad says, so the rule for the first time you go to this place is that you can pick one book and it'll be the book that you get to keep for the rest of your life. Like it's your book. You can do whatever you want with it, but you're basically in charge of that book. So Daniel ends up picking The Shadow of the Wind and it's by this author named Julian Carax and Daniel just falls in love with this book and he rereads it and he reads it over and over again and he's trying to find more books from this author, more information about the author and in the process of this, I think he was trying to find more books by the author because he loved his writing so much. He learns that someone has been systematically burning all the books by this particular author and is now trying to come to Daniel to take the book that he has because this person wants to burn all the books by Julian Carax. So this takes Daniel on this incredible journey of, I mean, so many different life experiences at such a young age, and he meets so many different people, and he learns all these different stories about different people's lives and how they're all intertwined and how they're affecting each other. It's so beautiful in the way Carlos Ruiz Zafon creates stories upon stories like this is a book within books because we're talking about the shadow of the wind and there's a section where you have like a manuscript from one character they talk about parts of the shadow of the wind within this book there's so many mentions of different books but especially this book that we're talking about but of course this book that we're reading is called shadow of the wind and it's interesting because there's a lot of parallels in the books and I don't want to give anything away, but I just, there's a lot of complexity to this story. There's a lot of detail. So if you're not into really detailed writing, this is a very atmospheric, not a fast pace. It's not a thriller. It's, it's a slow pace. It's like a slow burn kind of mystery. But I mean, like I said before, the mystery elements aren't the most shocking maybe that's what some people have been disappointed with with this book because some people feel like it's just way too slow or it's just not surprising enough but I don't know I just think it is such a gorgeous gorgeous book that none of that stuff ever mattered to me on both readings the first time I read it which I think I was a little more surprised the first time but when I reread it this time I didn't remember some of the little things but I wasn't surprised, you know, like I, I kind of could get that as I was reading along with it. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's a gothic mystery. So the atmosphere and the style of the writing and the detail of the writing and all the description is really a big part of what makes this book so fantastic. So a lot of gothic novels I think of, I think more setting driven, you know, talking about the setting, talking about the atmosphere, talking about all those different things. But this book is very character driven. It's a lot about these characters that you end up falling in love with because they're so I don't know. It's kind of what I said with John Steinbeck. Like, I'll say it again. It's these aren't perfect characters. They aren't perfect people. They make mistakes. There's very gray elements to some of these characters, but you still end up absolutely loving them and you form attachments to them. And they're, gosh, such tragic figures. I mean, every figure in this book is a tragic figure. And I just think it's so beautiful. Like, I don't always need a book to be light, fluffy, and pleasant. And this is like the perfect example of that, where the situations are dire. And I still think this book is beautiful, stunning. So yeah, I recommend it. If you like gothic novels, especially uh, slightly more modern gothic novels that are very character driven and you like storytelling, if you love storytelling, then you'll love this book. I mean, I don't mean like all of these books we read, the fiction books are stories, right? Obviously, but I'm talking about like more of a traditional idea of what storytelling is. If you like that, I think you really enjoy this book. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick update because I need to go to bed. I ended up reading a lot later than I expected to. But 
I finished the third book in the Magic Treehouse series, which was like Mummies in the Morning or something along those lines. And I really was happy to come back to this one. I said I gave the second one three stars. This one's another four star read. So it was really, really cute. Love the story about the mummy in this one. Might have liked it a little more than the dinosaurs ones too. I like the mummy one the best so far. And then... Oh, yeah, I started reading Heartstopper Volume 1, which I've been wanting to read that series for a while. And I'm really excited I did. I absolutely loved it. Five-star read. I'll talk to you more about it tomorrow, but I do need to get to sleep because I might be regretting how late I stayed up tonight. <laughs> tomorrow. Good night. Okay, so Squash That Series is completely finished. And... I had such a fun time with it. So the last two books that I finished out the night with on Sunday night were the third book in the Magic Treehouse series, which is Mummies something, I can't remember right now, but I'll put it up here. And this one was so much fun. In fact, I think it's my favorite of the Magic Treehouse. Did I say school bus? I meant Treehouse. I think it's my favorite of the Magic Treehouse series so far. Right, I've only read three of them and there's like 36 or something crazy like that. So the formula for these stories is pretty much all the same. It's these two characters that find a tree house that is magical and takes them to different places. So in this particular one, they go to Egypt and you know, it's all about mummies and stuff. And it was so fun and so cute. And I really liked the storyline behind this one a lot more than the second book for sure. And so, yeah, I can't wait to read more. The next one's about pirates. So hopefully I'll get that done before the end of the month because that's one of my reads for this month. I, it will. They're very short. They go very quickly. And then the other book I read was Heartstopper, which I could not put down. In fact, I had to go to work early the next day and I was like, don't stay up late. Don't stay up late. But I couldn't put Heartstopper Volume 1 down. Really, really loved it. Five stars. Easily. I love the characters. The art wasn't necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing art to my eye. But I loved what was done with the art. I felt like there was a lot of the humor and different personality traits conveyed just through the artwork and not necessarily, there wasn't a ton of dialogue in this particular book. I mean, there was there was some, but there wasn't as much as you know, you've seen others. And I thought that there was so much conveyed through the art. I really just liked all those elements to it. Love the characters, cannot wait, cannot wait to continue on because it definitely leaves you on a cliffhanger. So I'm waiting for the next book in the, the series to come available through the library. And yeah, I can't wait to read all four of them and then watch the show because the show is so like famous on Netflix and everybody's in love with it. So I can't wait because I'm really seeing already that I love these characters. So at this point, I think that might be my favorite graphic novel that I have ever read. I don't know, I've read some good ones, but that might be my favorite. So I'm really excited to continue on this series and see what Nick and Charlie get into. Sadly, because I did not finish that fourth Magic Treehouse book during the Squatch Hat series, period. I did not actually get a bingo. <laughs> I'll show you my bingo board here. Uh, I got an L shape. And so, you know, it didn't work out, but that's okay. You know what? I had a good time. I had a lot of things going that weekend. I still had fun with this and I did work on series. I started new series, but... <laughs> Okay, I didn't work on series. I started new series. Well, <laughs> next time. There's always next time. So definitely go check out Bailey from Is Bailey Reading and Kayla from Kayla Ray Reads. Thank you so much for hosting this wonderful readathon. And hopefully, <laughs> one of these times that they have this readathon, I will be more available so I can be on top of it and actually get some progress done. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see what happens at some point <laughs> i'm kind of taking a break right now i know i had mentioned that before and that had a lot to do with the fact that i'm working anywhere from 9 to 12 hours a day right now and it's very physical work so i'm exhausted most of the time and i'm also trying to finish this course which i'm finding i don't have enough time for because of my work schedule and we have this giant scavenger hunt we do every year that's coming up and Shell and Nathaniel are coming to visit and I said all this in my community post but I just wanted to just reiterate that I really would love to be doing content right now but I just don't see myself having the time right now and I wouldn't want to give you lackluster content and I just it's too overwhelming to even think about because <laughs> everything is overwhelming right now so Thank you so much for supporting my channel and I will be back soon in the middle of August, hopefully, and we'll get kind of caught up and, and go forward from here because I have so much I want to talk to you about books because I love books and I love sharing my, my thoughts about books. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Bye.